What's going on guys, Mackenzie Long here, and I'm excited to be going over this PBS special from Frontline. It's called The Pension Gamble, and I think the reason why this is so important is that people don't really understand why we've shifted to the 401ks, what happened to pensions, and I think this documentary did a great job in kind of explaining it or doing some of the bullet points on kind of what's happened in our society and some of the things that are going to be happening after that. And the reason why that becomes important is that if you're going to be planning into the future on how to handle your own money, you might want to know what's going to be happening and some of the challenges that we're going to be faced with so that you can do a better job preparing. Preparing. And if you don't know me, my name is Mackenzie Long. I've been teaching people how money works for the last nine years. It's something that's not taught in schools, which means most people are financially illiterate. And by that, I mean that they make lots of mistakes with money and they're oftentimes being taken advantage of. The lack of financial literacy is a huge problem in our society. And obviously when you're solving big problems, there's lots of opportunity and lots of money to be made. And I think today's video is gonna be a great example of a lot of the things that are happening and what's coming into the future. And so let's, without further ado, let's just get into the video, okay? The state's public pension funds, which fund retirement plans for our teachers, firefighters, state police, and other public employees experienced a shortfall of more than $36 billion. Kentucky is not the only state in trouble. Nearly half of all states haven't saved enough money to pay for the benefits they've promised to government workers. In total, it's estimated they are short trillions of dollars. That's trillions. It's a problem that will affect everyone. So, why should you care? Because the bigger the problem becomes, the more tax dollars will be needed to fix it. That means fewer tax dollars being spent in areas of need, like schools or roadways. Talented teachers and other public servants may look for careers elsewhere. Pension problems are sparking some concern for workers in northern Kentucky. Kentucky's pension system, one of the worst across the country. Just it matters what happens in Kentucky because what is Kentucky's problem is New Jersey's problem is Illinois' problem, is Connecticut's problem, is California's problems, is go on and on and on. This is a crisis of epic proportion in the United States of America, and it's time we wake up and address it. That there will be some form of a, a safety net for us when we get too old to trundle into the classroom. A guarantee. A guarantee. It's a promise. And a good chunk of our salary is taken out from day one and deposited into a retirement plan. All right, so basically what they're setting up so far right now, if you don't know, if you haven't been paying attention, is that pensions have really been going away. And they're setting up this idea that what are Americans really supposed to do if we don't have some form of ability to be able to prepare for retirement. And the previous way of doing it was a pension. And as the guy mentioned here, pensions were funded or are funded by the people who are working. So they're basically taking a portion out of their paycheck and that money is being put into what's called a pension fund. And that pension fund has many, many people in it and the size of the pensions can change depending on the people that are in it. But it can be hundreds of people, thousands of people, whatever it might be this workforce. And then that fund for those people is supposed to be managed and then get a rate of return so that it can have a guaranteed or a promised amount of retirement income. And generally what it was is, and generally what they would do is say, hey, maybe 50% or 70% of your working years, whatever you're making in those last few years, I know this is the case with my mom, is that we're going to take 70% or 50% of what you were making and we're going to guarantee you an income stream from that, okay? So that's what they're setting up here. The decisions about how to invest and grow pension fund money are made by a pension board and its financial advisors. And for many years, Kentucky Retirement Systems, or KRS, was flush with cash. KRS investment return on that money for that period of time estimated to be about $2 billion. 20 years ago, it looked as if it would not ever have a problem. It's got to have an interest rate on it that gives us the same earnings Today, Betty Pendergrass sits on the board of KRS. Where was the Kentucky Retirement System sitting in 1999? It was sitting in, at nearly 100% funded. But then, in 2000, the dot-com bubble burst. KRS lost $1.2 billion. 
Okay, so what she said there was that uh, she mentioned it was 100% funded. And so what it means to be 100% funded is that they were on track to be able to match their obligations. And so these guaranteed payments that they were promising people, whether it's teachers or firefighters or police, they were guaranteeing a part of that paycheck, again, like that 50 or 75%. And in, 19, and in 1999, they were 100% funded or very close to 100% funded, meaning they could pay back all of those obligations. It's basically seen as a debt for them that they're going to have to pay back this money. So they're managing the money for these people and the fund is running great in 1999 until the 2000.com crash. Kentucky was suffering, but politicians were reluctant to raise taxes to pay the full cost of their bills. And they began to divert pension money. What will Kentucky do? That's what you're assembled here in Frankfurt to decide. In Kentucky, the pension was used basically as a piggy bank. The problem was, once you've started to short your state pensions to cover the budget shortfall, it's hard to just do it the one time. As one governor after another invested in roads, bridges, libraries, and more, pension obligations were not met. So instead of making those payments, they've used that money for roads, schools, things that are important, but that other tax revenues are not funding. And, and the thing is, is that the bill will come due. The bill will come due. So basically what they're saying is that after that dot-com crash in 2000, this fund lost billions of dollars. And now in order to replace those billions of dollars that's in this fund, they're supposed to be putting money into the fund. They're supposed to be making good on it. It would basically be if you had money in the stock market and you lost money, basically what you need to do is put more money in so that you can recoup it. But basically what the government decides to do, and this is pretty much all politicians, this is not just happening in Kentucky, this is happening everywhere, is they say, well, it's easier to get reelected if I do things that people can see. This is the same mentality that people have when it comes to money. And they go, well, if we build roads, if we put in new schools, my ability to keep my job and my ability to get reelected is going to be much higher. So instead of putting that money back into the funds, not necessarily that they were robbing money from the funds, but they needed to put more into it to be able to match up with the requirements of those people that were getting paychecks and that will get paychecks from it. But instead of doing that, they decide to build roads and do those kinds of things, which is great for the economy and it's great to get reelected, but it's leaving these people behind. I had my head in the clouds. I'm a teacher, I'm busy, I got a family, I got a life. They take a bunch out of my paycheck uh, every two weeks, and so that's going into a little pile. It's going to accrue interest. I figured this is on autopilot. I don't have to worry about the pension. By 2008, Kentucky's pension funds were in very bad shape, and things were about to get much worse. Nearly every sector of Kentucky's economy was affected. KRS lost $2.8 billion. It punched a hole in the boat. I mean, the boat was taken on water, but now we got a hole. There was a huge downturn in the funding status because of that crisis. And you can't pay that back in five years. Okay, so basically what she's saying there is she, now she's saying that the funding was not met. And what this means is they have more obligations than they have money in the fund because in 2008, so 2000, they had lost a ton of money and they were just about getting back on track and 2008 hit. And this is exactly what's happening with families as well. So 2008 hits and now the fund is down over $2 billion. That's huge. So now they have this huge liability of payments they need to be making to people who are retired now and people who are retired in the future that are going to be pulling from this pension fund. However, the pension fund doesn't have enough money in it, and now it's 2008, 2009, they just lost a bunch more. Well, of recent years is putting a comfortable retirement at risk for many Americans. So the investment crews are feeling the pressure to get the returns up so that we're generating more money going into the system. Now you're swinging for the fences. Right less money available, many pension funds are under pressure to take on more risk by investing. In Starting in the fall of 2009, Kentucky's public pensions decided that to dig out from under, they would invest a portion of their portfolio in some of Wall Street's more exotic and risky investment vehicles, 
like hedge funds. But here is where it gets tricky. Knowing how to invest is difficult. I'd like to go through all the recommended policies and vote in mass, and then if someone was some trustees have financial experience, but others are police and firefighters appointed to the board to represent their co-workers, often not trained in portfolio management. In 2008, only two members of the board had any investment management experience. So, as you can see what's happening, now this fund is down $2 billion, and the people who are on the board obviously want to work on getting that money back because they have obligations to make. And, and the challenge with that, when you become desperate, and this is what happens with human nature and people with investing, is they go, well, I've lost a lot, so now I need to risk even more. And so what they're talking about doing is they want to get more into a risky portfolio so that they can recoup some of these losses. The challenge being is not just that they are wanting to get more risky, but the people on the board of this pension, most of them have no idea what they're doing or how to analyze investments. And it was saying only two of them actually knew what the heck was going on. The rest of them were firefighters, police officers, that kind of stuff, which nothing against them. They just don't really know what they're doing when it comes to understanding investing. Every month, Kentucky Retirement Systems makes over 100,000 pension payments, with the average retiree receiving around $1,500. The total outflow is nearly $2 billion a year. But by 2013, the KRS board and Kentucky legislators worried that in the future, they would not have enough money to meet their obligations. I think people started to realize, we let this debt get out of control. Lawmakers decided it was time to make some drastic changes. We changed the system so that you no longer get a defined benefit plan if you're a state employee and you got this hybrid cash balance plan. Basically a 401k type plan. Basically a 401k type plan, better than a 401k, but not as good as a defined benefit plan. The move into 401k style plans, this was widely seen as a compromise, but it's a big difference. And uh, it's a lot more uncertain. Uh, with a 401k plan. So there were a couple things that we missed in there that I kind of had to fast forward because it was very long and this uh, almost an hour video that we're trying to shrink down. But basically they, because they were so desperate on getting these returns back, they made some terrible decisions and they got into some hedge funds that they didn't really understand. They had some people who were stealing money out of the funds. They had laws that were changing and all of these dynamics are beating up against this pension fund. And all of these dynamics are beating up this retirement pension for these people. And this is not just happening in Kentucky, this is happening everywhere. And so that's why most pensions have now gone away because of these things. Some of them ended earlier, some of them are still going, but they're really struggling. And the importance of understanding here is, if you haven't noticed the stock market is down over the last few days, last few weeks. So what happens if we go into another recession where a pension fund like this was just about to recoup, there's just starting to come back they can't meet their obligations and now we're going into a third wave of losses from 2000 to 20 from 2000 to 2008 and then we had a small loss obviously when the pandemic happened but that came back rather quickly and now what happens if we do this again 2022 2023 a lot of these pension funds are not going to be fully funded meaning they're not going to be able to meet their obligations and so because of that they've got to switch tactics if you can't, if you have more people coming to a system and you can't afford to even pay the people that are already in the system, you've either got to put more money into it or you've got to change that system. And what the government is now promote, and what the government started promoting was 401k plans. The most important thing to do is stop digging. The long shot candidate was Matt Bevan, a former hedge fund manager and Tea Party favorite. We have a legal and a moral obligation. His to make campaign promise was if the pension system is bankrupt, the inviolable contract is moot. Because if you don't have those dollars to pay those benefits, then okay, you don't pay those benefits. This tells us that we as a state are in dire risk of becoming financially insolvent. And that if we are unable to meet the pension obligations that we have to people, this comes at the expense of everything else that we care about, everything else that we would fund. 
Once in office, Bevan decided to stop shorting the pension system and to make what are called actuarially required contributions, or annual ARC payments. We have an $82 billion pension problem. There are going to be hard decisions made by this body. Governor Bevan is doing what no governor has done for at least 15, 16 years, which is fully fund the ARC again. Bevan concluded that the teachers' pension system was unsustainable. Keeping the promise will save Kentucky's pension systems. Under a proposal called Keeping the Promise, all newly hired teachers would be moved. Basically, there's two trains of thoughts, and, and one of them is, well, we should just keep operating the way that we should be operating. So they know that this fund is not going to, not only is it not going to be able to pay for the people who are retired now, but it's not going to be able to pay for the obligations. And in the first time, in, they said in 15 years, this governor actually decided to make the regular payments. This would be like having an insurance payment or having a retirement goal and you're you haven't been making the regular payments to it so of course you're not going to hit that goal but now this thing is 80 billion dollars behind and he commits to making sure that they're making the payments but he's seeing that this is a losing battle and so now he's got to decide what is it that we're actually going to do and the reason why this becomes so politically incorrect is because we have to make hard choices we've got to make decisions on where our money is going to go. And this is true not just in our household, but, and this is true not just in the government, but also in our household. And this is why voting and understanding what your politicians are saying makes a big difference. Because in order to get this fund back on track, that $80 million has to come from somewhere. That means we cut spending on schools and roads and all of these other things and other liabilities that that state might have to be able to catch up on this pension. But the challenge is people don't want to do that. They don't want to give up their benefits and growth into the future to pay for future obligations. This is just like a family having a huge credit card debt problem. However, they don't want to stop spending into the future because they need a new car, they need to upgrade stuff, they need to send their kids to school, they need to buy school clothes. So we're all torn between this and how do I pay for these obligations? But then how do I also move forward with my life? And this is exactly where this pension is caught. Teachers worry that when the time comes for them to retire, the state won't have the money to pay their pensions. State lawmakers don't want to raise taxes. Voters don't want to accept tax increases. Retirees, I think rightfully, don't want to accept cuts to benefits that they were promised. I won't be the governor when this thing falls apart. It's tough medicine, but to save the system. The next governor, regardless of who they are or what ideology they represent, it won't matter what lie they give. Reality will come crashing home. The end game is pretty clear. Uh, pensions are on their way out. So what we're going to have within the next generation or two is Americans who are going to have terribly insecure retirements. Uh, they're going to have to live on whatever they've managed to squirrel away to their own savings. What happens if you have no pension? I don't want to think about that. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Many of us teachers are working paycheck to paycheck, trying to make ends meet. That's like a pivotal point, right? Like it's like a make or break time. I have no savings, so my pension is everything. Without that, I won't survive. So the guy makes a good point there, right? He says that, well, we can either raise taxes, which governors and the politicians don't want to raise taxes. Also, people don't want to pay more taxes or we could reduce the benefits that we promised, but those three options nobody wants to do. This is like, well, I could either put more into my retirement savings and spend less, or, but I don't really want to do that, or I could reduce what I actually want to retire on, but I don't want to do that either, but something has to give. And we can go back and we can blame the hedge fund managers. We can blame that the people didn't really know what they were doing. We can blame the stock market. We can blame whoever we want. 
it doesn't really matter at this point. These things are going to fall apart for the vast majority of them. And one of the things that they didn't mention here is the growing of the population. So not necessarily that where the population is growing, which it did, but also that people are living longer. So these funds, the calculations that these people did over 30, 40 years ago was that people were going to pass away early and they were only going to live in their retirement years for a few years, maybe three to five years, but now they're living 20 years into retirement. So the fund has actually got beaten up itself and that it's lost a ton of money. It's been robbed of money. It hasn't been properly funded by the government. The payout is getting worse than they expect it to be. So all of these things are depleting this fund. And then we have politicians. This is why it's so important, and again, not to get political, but this is why it's important to have people in office that can make these tough decisions because one politician is going to come in and say well let's just kick the can down the road i don't want to tell these people that they have to pay more taxes or that they're going to get less benefits so i'm not going to do that i'm just going to build roads and make it look like the economy is growing while we're actually crumbling from the inside versus somebody like this comes in and says look we've got to start changing some of these things we've got to do something different so if we don't if we can't raise taxes if we can't lower what people would actually get we just can't afford to continue to fund this thing and have more people come into it that we can't match these guarantees, that we can't keep our promises on. So we've got to turn to a 401k. The challenge with the 401k is now all of the responsibility is on the individual. So those mistakes that the people were making who were managing the pension are now put on you. You have to figure out what am I investing in? When am I going to retire? What's the risk that I'm willing to take? What, how, do I, how am I going to be taxed into the future? All of those challenges that the pension fund used to take care of for people is now being put on the responsibility of the individual in their 401k. So basically what's happening is the government said, well, obviously we're not doing a good job at this and people are unhappy with us. So here's a 401k, here's your opportunity for you to handle it on your own. The challenge is this transfer of responsibility was never explained to the American people. It was just passed off on them and we promised we're gonna take care of your pension to we can't meet these obligations to now it's your responsibility, but we haven't taught people financial literacy. Most people are financially illiterate and don't understand how to read basic financial statement. We're not teaching these things in school Yet we expect somehow into the future, people are going to figure this stuff out and they're going to be able to figure out how to retire for a longer period of time than they ever expected. And the vast majority of our population will spend as much time, if not more time in retirement than they did in their working years. The challenge is we have not prepared anybody to figure out how to actually do this for themselves. And because they're financially illiterate, they're doing exactly what these people are doing. They put some money into something that they don't understand. They end up losing that money. Then they try to double and triple down. They end up losing more money. So they become even more desperate and they end up losing their life savings. And we have, and we don't do anything to help them. This is why it's important to understand these things and the progression of why we are where we are now. And if we don't start to change some of these things, as it's said in the video, we're gonna have huge consequences over the next several generations and we're already starting to see this in effect. So what can you do? I don't mean to be a downer in this video, but what can we do? The thing that you can do is get financially educated. Figure out for yourself what these words mean. If you're listening to something like this that's broken down and watered down and you don't understand half of what they're saying, you probably need to be financially educated. I do have a course down below and that's not the purpose of this video, but I have a course down below. There's no cost for it. It's How Money Works. It's based on the best-selling book by Steve Siebold and Tom Matthews. It's a fantastic book. It's a course that will walk you through a lot of the basics. It is fairly basic, so it's not going to get you into the weeds on a lot of stuff, but it'll at least help you to start putting your household in order and understanding how these things work so that you can prepare for the future and then you can start looking for some extra and then you can start looking for some extra experience. <clears throat>
And then you can start looking for some extra professional help outside of that. And I hope that's helpful for you. There's a code down there as well that you can get it at no cost whatsoever. It doesn't even ask for your information other than your name. You have to set up a profile with Teachable, but other than that, there's no cost to you. It doesn't take your credit card information or anything weird like that. And you can at least start educating yourself. And if you don't like that, then find some other way, whether it's Dave Ramsey, who's not my favorite in a lot of ways, but he's at least a good start for most people. Uh, then you can do something like that, but get financially educated. I hope this was helpful for you. Don't forget to smash that like button and also hit the subscribe as well. And if you got caught in some of these things or if you've noticed your pension going away, I would love to have a comment from you as well and some of the things that you experienced and kind of what you're doing maybe to get some of that stuff on track. Maybe that will help inspire some other people to get their life on track as well. Hope this was helpful for you again, and I'll catch you guys later. Bye.